Hello everyone, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and today we're going to see if I can pass an FBI shooting test from the 1940s. A few weeks ago we talked about how the FBI was responsible for the nationwide hip shooting trend in pistol training from the 1940s through the 1980s. The FBI has always had a major influence on the firearms world in general. Sometimes that's been a good thing and sometimes not so much. The hip shooting thing was a bit misguided, for example, but they also pushed things like more realism in firearms training. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Over the years, the FBI has used a bunch of different shooting courses for training and qualifying agents. Each of those courses can act as kind of a window into the trends in handgun training from the era when they were being used. So this is gonna be a three-part series. Today, we're gonna to look at the first official FBI pistol course from 1945. Next time, we'll look at one from the 80s. And then lastly, we will check out the most recent one from 2019. Our course for today is called the FBI Practical Pistol Course. Different variations of this course were used by law enforcement agencies all over the country for decades. Eventually, it even evolved into its own sport called Police Pistol Combat Shooting, or PPC. I am going to use the version of this course that was published in the FBI Law Enforcement Bulletin in 1946. The FBI has PDFs of all the back issues on their website, and this was published in installments over three issues. If you want to check this out for yourself, we've actually consolidated those all into one PDF that you can get from the link in the video description. This version has a ton of photos and it details exactly how you're supposed to shoot every part of the course of fire. It also shows you common mistakes to avoid. So I am gonna try and follow this as much as possible to get the full retro FBI experience. I'm not gonna wear a tie and high-waisted pants, but I will use a strong side behind the hip belt holster. At the time, agents were issued a four inch Colt police positive revolver in 38 Special. I am gonna be using a three inch Smith & Wesson Model 64. It's not quite the same as the Colt, but it's pretty close. They're both small slash medium frame 38 specials with a six shot capacity and fixed iron sights. The only modern convenience I have here is the orange nail polish on the front sight. The pistol course is 50 shots broken up into four stages or steps as they call them. It starts at seven yards, then it goes back to 60, then up to 50, and finally 25 yards. There's a time limit of 25 seconds for the first stage. Then you start the clock again at 60 yards and you actually keep it running until you finish the course. You get five minutes and 45 seconds to complete stages two, three, and four. That comes to six minutes and 10 seconds for the entire course. Everything is done in five shot strings of fire. This was before speed loaders and the FBI didn't issue any kind of ammo carrier in the 1940s. So all reloads are done with loose ammo in a pants pocket. Also, since you're loading five rounds into a six shot revolver, you have to make sure to index the empty chamber so it's under the firing pin when you close it. All of that makes for a very slow and tedious reload process that's performed eight times on the clock during this course. The target they used is the original Colt silhouette, later known as the B-21. This was the first mass-produced silhouette-style target designed for police and combat-style shooting. The target we have here is actually a B-21X, which adds the 5X target circle in the middle. The original one did not have that. The target has K and D values. The K is for kill, and the D is for disable. That concept was already pretty outdated even by the 1940s. The instructions for the pistol course point out that, quote, since special agents only shoot in self-defense, only the K value is scored. Okay, so let's look at the course of fire. Step one starts at seven yards at the command, draw, fire five rounds, double action from the hip shooting position. Reload with loose rounds from a pocket and fire five more rounds. The time limit is 25 seconds. I uh, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my, 10 must be off the target somewhere. So. Ideally, you kind of like walk your rounds onto the target, but when I was firing, I could see the paper moving, but I couldn't tell where my hits were going. So I'm already 15 points down. Uh, awesome. 
This is the only stage where they specify you have to fire double action. For all the other stages, I think it's just assumed that you're gonna thumb cock the hammer before each shot and fire single action, but I don't think double action was disallowed for those other stages. I'm probably gonna fire most of this double action because that's just what I'm used to. Step two takes us to 60 yards. Once you start the timer again, it doesn't stop until the end, but before that, load five rounds in the gun, holster, then dump another 35 rounds in a pocket for reloads. Ladies, I guess this was before they had female agents because I know y'all don't have pockets big enough for that much ammo. At the command, the timer starts again, drop to your knees, draw, then get into a prone position and fire five rounds. Stay in the prone position and reload, then get up to a kneeling position, reholster, and move up to 50 yards. The 50 and 25 yard positions require a barricade that is six and a half feet tall by three feet wide, we're gonna use these VTAC barricades instead. At 50, drop to a sitting position, draw and fire five rounds, swing around to a prone position, reload and fire five more. After that, you're gonna get up from prone and reload behind the barricade, then fire five shots left hand only from the left side of the barricade, reload, fire five shots right hand only from the right side. Now they want you to use the barricade in a very specific way. You're using it as a support. So. For the left-handed shots, you brace your right hand against the barricade with the thumb flagged out. Then the left wrist sits on top of the thumb so the whole gun and left hand are out past the barricade. They are pretty adamant about not exposing any part of your body more than absolutely necessary. So they want you to aim with your left eye when you're on the left side and with your right eye on the right side. After that, reload behind the barricade and then move briskly up to the 25 yard line for the last stage. This is gonna be a repeat of the 50 yard stage, except we're skipping the prone position. So we're gonna do five shots sitting and then go straight to the barricade. At the barricade, we're gonna start on the right side this time, right hand only, and then go to the left side, left hand only. 15 shots total, and that is the end of the course. To score your target, add up all the K values. The maximum possible score is 250 points. Multiply your point total by 0.4, and that's your percentage score. The FBI instructions actually don't mention the minimum you have to get for a passing score. Most of their later tests require 70 to 80% to pass. My score for this run was 72.8 with plenty of time to spare. Passing or not, I am not at all satisfied with that performance. I totally missed the target nine times. I may have done better if I'd shot it slower or single action, but what really got me was all of the unfamiliar shooting positions and techniques. So I'm gonna take another shot at it, but first let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the 1945 FBI course. There's a lot about this course that feels pretty dated by modern standards. But you have to remember that in the 1940s, the vast majority of pistol training for law enforcement and everybody else was very formal. It was the one-handed, slow-fire bullseye, single action only, support hand stuck in your pocket. It's about as impractical as you can possibly get for handgun training. So compared to that, the FBI course is pretty cutting edge. It involves drawing and reloading on the clock. There's enough movement to get your heart rate up a little. You get to practice using cover. Those were all pretty innovative concepts at the time. It's a fairly difficult course by modern standards. Today, most pistol shooters Shooters don't practice much at 25 yards, let alone 50 and 60 yards. On the other hand, you have plenty of time to thumb cock the hammer and fire single action, which does make it a little easier. The target is also huge. And if you hit anywhere in this massive torso area, you're getting either four or five points for each shot. It's still a challenging course, but maybe not quite as difficult as it seems at first glance. The real question is whether it's challenging in the right ways. 80% of this course has you at 25 yards or more. You could argue that we don't practice those longer ranges enough these days, but the fact remains that most gunfights take place at seven yards or less. So that's probably where we should spend most of our training time if we're trying to prepare for real world violence. The sitting and the prone positions were an attempt at realism that in hindsight, it's not very realistic. I think most instructors today would agree that if you're out in the open 
and you're being shot at, the last thing you wanna do is intentionally limit your mobility. But at least this course gets you thinking about how you might adjust your shooting based on the distance to the target and whether or not you have cover. Obviously the hip shooting at seven yards is not ideal either. I talked about that a few weeks ago. At that range, we really want two hands on the gun and we want it at eye level. That's not to say that some form of hip firing is always a bad idea. In the 80s, the FBI introduced the close shooting course, which was 50 rounds all fired at one to three yards. They used techniques that resemble some of the retention positions that are commonly taught today. I don't even have time to really get into the barricade shooting thing. I've seen a number of different techniques for shooting around cover. They all have strengths and weaknesses. This one is by far the most awkward I've ever tried. The inclusion of timed reloads was another progressive concept. That didn't become the norm in law enforcement for decades after the FBI did it, but I do wonder about the training value of making the agents do so many reloads with loose rounds from a pocket. Were they really carrying loose ammo in their pockets when they were on duty? Some agents might have purchased their own dump pouches or cartridge loop belts or some other loading device or something. I don't think anything like that was standard issue in the 1940s. Later on, they did have uh, two by two pouches for carrying spare ammo. I believe those came around in the 1960s. I'm sure some agents had speed loaders eventually, but even those were not really available or commonplace until the 70s and 80s. The one thing that makes this course feel completely different from other qualifier style shooting tests is the fact that the clock is running almost the whole time. It makes it feel more like a really long stage in an action pistol match. You have to remember what you're supposed to do at each stage and do it all in the correct order. That's a pretty good way to test whether you're able to shoot at a subconscious level. If you have to think too much about your shooting, then you're gonna mess up the procedure part of it. Of course, that only applies the first few times you shoot it. Once the course of fire is in your subconscious memory, it's not really adding any extra mental load. Okay, I am gonna shoot that again, and this time I'm gonna kinda of do a freestyle sort of thing. I don't think it helped that I was using a bunch of techniques that I don't ever do. So this time, I'm gonna use the same distances and shot counts, but I am gonna shoot it all standing. I'm gonna shoot it all two-handed. I will do uh, left hand around the left side of the barricade and all that, but I'm not gonna do the weak side eye because that's just a disaster. I didn't have any problem with the time limit. That was not an issue, so I'm not gonna bother with uh, loading the loose rounds. Uh, I could do speed loaders. That feels a little too much like cheating. So instead, we're gonna split the difference. I'm gonna use speed strips just to make it not quite as tedious. Hopefully, I will uh, get a much better score this time. Let's find out. My second run started out strong. I easily cleaned the first stage in less time than it took me to do the reload the first time around. Shooting everything standing felt much more comfortable than trying to do it prone or sitting. For the barricade, I decided to try out a technique that I saw in Jim Cirillo's book. It didn't feel great, but it was much better than the old FBI technique. I missed my first shot at the barricade. I also had a miss at 60 yards, but I still managed a final score of 92.8%. If you have a range where you can shoot this course, I would suggest giving it a try. You could even shoot it with a semi-auto and a modern holster if you want. It's just a fun challenge that's a little different than the way most of us normally train. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Until next time, if you need some ammo, be sure to get it from us and get it with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.